we're going to um, move into the next portion of our event. Um, and I has, as I have mentioned earlier, um, this program was really inspired by my good friend Francis Wong and his life's work. And um, I, I, he came to Cool Arts, I think, in 1990, uh, Francis, uh, to 1992. He was like a general manager, and he, he was the one that arranged um, uh, the 1990 European tour by how many of us? There were like maybe 15 Asian Americans in Italy and and we'd come and like, oh, who are all these Chinese people? That's <laughs> what <laughs> you were saying, and a bus, bus load of folks. But so, um, you know, uh, Francis had um, his artistic practice really blossomed and I was so um, fortunate to watch him grow as an artist, an administrator, as a mentor. And um, he continued and remained um, steadfast in his support of cool arts, um, you know, as an advisor and as a board member. Um, Francis, you were there through ups and downs uh, of building cool arts as a arts, a community based presenting arts organization. Um, I've always counted on you. I'm going to try not to cry. Um, calm, your calm voice, your wife. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and all that. You've been um, Cool Arts Board President for so many years. I can't even imagine you not being on that seat. But um, thank you. Um, I am a bit sad that you're getting off my board. <laughs> I miss you. Um, but also I heartily cheer you on um, as you continue your artistic practice, your mentorship to the next generation of arts leaders and culture bearers and everybody, everything. Um, so you're my bro, Francis, my arts bro. Thank you. Always, so always. And I bow <laughs> deeply with gratitude for everything you've done as evidenced by these folks that are speaking tonight. So yes, thank you um, very much. Well, thank you, Alia. It's uh, been so moving, you know, for, for all, all this time. And so um, it's not like it's ending, it's just, I'm not gonna be on the Zoom call next time. <laughs> <laughs> So Francis, what we did was that we had requested for um, a few of your friends to um, share some words about their friendship with you on a video. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> so um, I think it's Wilfred. Wilfred, do you want to show that video now? We're going off script now. We're, we're just like free, free, free for all kind of thing. So yeah. Will Fred please show it? Francis? Wong, the great Wong, <laughs> Chase's sound brings unity to the soul of all things. Love you, man. My favorite Love memory you. of Francis has to be when um, I was at a performance and I remember um, him and Hafez Modirzadeh coming down the aisles. They were coming down the aisles just like 
blowing on their horns and just playing their hearts out. And it was electrifying, it was raucous, it was joyous, um, it was disruptive. It was just all the things that I just remember about um, Francis Wong's playing. Even though he has this very passionate playing style, I feel his personality is very calm and no, no nonsense and very practical. And I just remember him asking, asking him one time, you know, Francis, you do so many different things. How do you keep it together? And he was like, Donna, if you can't keep it all in your mind without writing it down, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> and um, I just kind of really took that heart to heart. I first met Francis Wong when I was a first year undergraduate at UC Berkeley. It was my first professional gig. He treated me uh, with kindness, dignity, and respect. And it was evident to me then, as it is evident to me now, that he holds the institution of Asian American music in the highest regard. I firmly believe that it is people like Francis who ensure that creative music and cultures of color inhabit a shared future. I owe my career to him. I remember meeting Francis back in 2016 at the Chinese Cultural Center in San Francisco. And since then we've just been performing all over the city and I think my favorite ones have been the um, performances at the Day of Remembrance Film Festival because he has welcomed me into an amazing community of people and artists that make me feel safe to be myself. Thank you so much, Francis, for being an amazing friend, and congratulations. Francis Wong is one of the most compassionate, creative, brilliant, innovative, generous, and enlightened beings I know. He breaks boundaries, defies what we think is possible, and is always at the forefront of ingenuity. He is a strategist, activist, a soul whose sound is genuine, empathetic, and wise beyond generations. His force and impact are deeply felt and have rippling effects. He makes the impossible possible and asks us to step forward to respond to his call to action. One of my favorite memories of Francis is probably one of the first gigs we ever played together. Uh, it was a Chinese New Year celebration at uh, UC Santa Cruz when Francis was teaching down there. It was myself, Francis, and Elliot Umberto Cavi on drums. I think Francis had told me that it was a casual, and so uh, I brought a fake book because that's what bass players are supposed to do, and I was just starting out, right? And so we get down there, and I get all set up, and I put the fake book on the music stand, and I'm kind of waiting for Francis, and Francis comes over, and he looks at the fake book, and he says, what's that for? And I said, well, you know, just in case, you never know. And he looks at me, and he looks at the fake book, and he looks at me, and he looks at the fake book, and he says, no. And he takes the music stand with the fake book. He walks over to the side of the stage. He puts it off the stage where it stayed for probably the next two hours. And then he comes back and he just starts playing. And Elliot just starts playing. And it was one of the best lessons, the life-changing lessons that I had uh, at that early point in my career. And I'm really grateful for it. It kind of reminds me of something I've heard Francis say recently when we've talked that it's better to be in time than on time, right? That kind of early playing experience was a lesson in being in time and in the moment. And I'm really grateful for that. So thank you, Francis. And thank you, Aleluya, for this opportunity to celebrate Francis. Thank you. What I appreciate most about Francis is his clarity of thought and his clarity of communication, particularly the communication. Because he may not be clear in his thinking, but he'll be clear in telling me that he's not clear. And I can go from there. That's really most of what I need in life. Some clarity. Then I can make decisions and not regret them. That's Francis Wall. Hey, Francis. Our memories stretch back 40 years, man. That's a long time we've known each other, and we're overdue for our annual chat. We go back to the time when you and John and Fred Ho had started Asian Improv Arts, and you were down in Stanford with a John, and we started doing a benefits around town. And uh, we went on to collaborate with two giants who we lost, Herbie Lewis and Glenn Horiuchi. Yeah, we did that recording devotee at the Pine Methodist Church. But I always remember your laugh. You have the heartiest <laughs> laugh that's outdone only by John Jang's uh, raucous laughter. But I want to name you the Dean 
of Asian American creative music because you told me many years ago that you wanted to document Asian American creative music and that's what you've been doing for the past 40 years. So yeah, keep on Francis, we love you. Like Duke said, love you madly, take care. Hey Francis, this is Tatsu. What a celebration, man. Um, Francis Wong and I met uh, back in 1994. He came to Chicago and we did a recording together. And um, um, here is the album, our first duet work, Chicago Time Code. And we've been working together and playing music together for the 25 years now. But nobody sounds like Francis Wong. Thank you, Francis, for being a caring, visionary leader. You have developed a lot of people in building diff different kinds of communities through the arts. Thank you, Francis, for encouraging young artists like me to follow our hearts. Like in the Isley Brothers song, It's your Jane. Do what you want to do. East wind <laughs> blows again. I first met Francis some years ago at the Soy and Tofu Festival in Japantown when my date then, now husband, pointed him out. I made a comment on how an incredible musician he was. I was relatively new to the Bay Area at that time, and it was during the first couple years that I had just started war working with some of the cool arts projects. Fast forward to three years ago, I met Francis up close during my first school arts board meeting. His leadership as the president of the board is something that I look up to <clears throat> to this day. It made me understand even more how much of an institution cool arts have created for the community with Francis as one of the pillars of it. Francis, your wisdom has inspired a lot of ideas in pushing cool arts forward to where it is now. Maraming salamat for being a legend that a lot of people in my generation look up to. I wish you all the best, great health, and blissful happiness. Aloha and happy holidays to you and your family. Hey, surprise! Happy Francis Wong Day! <laughs> I wish we could have been able to all get together in one room with a lot of food, live music, and drinks, and be able to talk story. Um, I mean, after 30 years, I mean, what do you think? This is all you're going to get? <laughs> but, you know, we're trying our best. So thank you, Francis, for staying so long and being the board president and general manager and everything else that you've done for Cool Arts. I, I really hope you know that you're greatly appreciated for all the time you put in to help this organization stay alive and to move forward, to make connections, to be able to grow into the presenting organization that it is today. And I hope you know that, how important you are to our organization as well as all the other organizations that you've helped out over the years. And um, just wanted you to know that, that we love you. I'm gonna miss you on the board, man. Lots of love, man. Really appreciate you. And I hope you know that. was pretty amazing and uh you know thank you so much hey francis um, hey is it my turn <laughs> um so i'm the you know i was undergrad along with john carlos right in the 90s in san francisco state and um you know, I'm I'm a rocker, 
and but I was in the jazz ensemble and you were the uh, the person in, the leader the ensemble leader and I remember talking to you about uh, Asian American jazz and we had been talking a little before for that time um, and I remember just thinking oh man he, you know he's great I was out of your recordings and was like oh man it's nothing like what we're doing in the ensemble room because <laughs> well, summer was pretty straight ahead, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and I remember you telling me about um, the Japantown big band in Georgia, yeah. C Georgia Shida, right? And you put me in touch with them. And one of my biggest honors was when you, again, you put me on the bandstand. It was you, me, and Georgia Shida. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and I remember coming expecting, like, oh, is this going to be like a free thing with George Ishida and we played changes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I remember thinking, I remember thinking, Francis plays changes. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You know, and it was just it was it was really great experience. And like again, just want to thank you for all your years and mentorship and music and dare I say love. Um, so thanks. I love you, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you. Am I next? Uh, I think, is it Carl's turn? Oh, Carl, <laughs> right. Are we going out of order? You can boot me off and get Carl. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> I just wanted to articulate something that, um, uh, that was made evident to me recently as I've been I've been working on some some projects, some of them musical, some of them extra musical, all of them artistic with Francis. The last time I spoke to him, um, we had a pretty detailed and informative phone call. And then I remember when the phone call was done, I looked down at my phone, it was around an hour. And it reminded me of these stories that I'd heard about um, Ornette Coleman and John Coltrane um, speaking with one another. And eventually those, um, those um those conversations actually turning into into paid lessons it was just something that was just uns unspoken but um when i think of francis I, I think of this of this um this practice and this attribute which is so exceptional which is that he cares so much about this music and he cares so much about the survival of this music and about asian american culture that he's willing to kind of subsume himself under the practice and it's of paramount value to him that the music survives him and that the work survives him so i think of francis and i think of john coltrane in the same way it's that phrase selflessness i feel like if you're willing to elevate yourself to the point where you can be selfless as an artist your work can really transcend and you be you, you become more than yourself and um that's something that i've really been learning about Fra i've been learning from francis recently and it's something that i just find so exceptional it's something i wish to emulate Um, I think it's my turn. <laughs> uh, I have so many memories, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to sift through them and grab one, but the one that came up for me just now, I mean, I already spoke earlier about how, um, it was because of Francis that I made my first album and he was kind enough to appear on that album. Um, and one of the three bands because i thought it would be my one and only album so i put like everybody i knew on it but um there was a there was a piece on there that was a vestige of a band that i i had uh, been a part of prior to that album in the early years in the bay area for me um 93 94 the odd group called sonocentric ensemble and there was that was a group we had different kind of rotating guests but the core of it was me and this this saxophonist named Harold Yen um, but there was Girls. an incarnation of it with with Fran you know the two of us and Francis and Mia Masaoka and Donald Robinson the drummer and we were kind of like a unit for a while we had like this working ensemble and we had a whole like couple of sets worth of stuff uh, compositions and it was very open music it would get into some real energetic spaces some real delicate um like i said intimate <laughs> kind of spaces and um and i just remember this one set we did at this i can't even remember the venue 
but there was hardly anybody there. <laughs> it was like this right. cavernous <laughs> place. And, I um, and uh, I remember it, it very well because there was, a, there was a series of pieces I made that were called chants because they had like a melody that would get repeated just sort of almost in a ritualistic way. And I remember that um, this one gig, you just, um, you kept playing it and then you just left the stage and you just kept playing it and basically left the room playing it. And, it was, <laughs> you left, and, it, and I remember, it, I was reminded of that because um, I was also reminded of a phrase that uh, Muhal Richard Abrams used. He, he said, he wants to play the song that never ends. And I think that's you. <laughs> You're playing the song that never ends. That's my tribute to you. And I want to thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. John, it's your turn if you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just holding everybody to the email we got. <laughs> John Jang. John. Wow. Thank you all for those beautiful tributes. Um, I'm going to offer one that may not be, you know, well, you know, one of the questions is like, who, who is the head of Asian improv arts or, you know, who wears the pants in, in the Asian improv family? And so, um, let's see, in, in 1984, 1985, Francis and I performed at the University of Washington in Seattle. And so we were performing uh, Sergio Ortega's El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido, you know, the people united will never be defeated. And at the very end, I stood up. And what happened, Francis? You split your pants in front of the audience. Yes, <laughs> right down the middle. And so I was young and inexperienced at that time. We were only going to be there for one night. And so selfless and prepared Francis Wong gave me his pants. <laughs> and you have to remember that in 1984, 1985, Francis, it was a 190 pound Francis Wong, not like the, a lighter Francis Wong today. Um, and I was like a lighter John Jay, I weighed 120 pounds. So when I wore these uh, Ben Davis black pants, and I looked like the, what a cholo. And, and <laughs> anyway, there was, there, it, there was a lot of misadventures, but, I think that's what I loved about, you know, our experiences that we, you know, we're, we're serious about what we were trying to do. And France is very serious and calm, but we, we do have those, those uh, occasions of, you know, enjoying ourselves and humor. And I'm glad that you, you, that's a tribute to me. And, and that's the, another reason why we're called Asian improv. <laughs> Thank you, Francis. Thank you, John. <laughs> I think I'm next. Uh, Vijay, thank you for staying on top of that schedule that we got in that email. Um, yeah, um, I think one of the things that early on I was really um, impressed with about Francis and that really moved me was just how much he shows up for all kinds of events, you know, uh, just community events, um, just if, if he can be there, he's there. And um, a while ago, my brother-in-law, Nick, who sometimes plays with Francis, uh, had some sort of engagement. I don't remember exactly what prompted this conversation, but um, he had an opportunity to, to do something and we were talking about it and he was like, what would Francis Wong do? And then, my sister had told me Nick and I were like, oh, Francis would do it. So then <laughs> the our, our takeaway was, you know, if there's an opportunity to show up for your community, Francis would do it. So now sometimes that's something we say to each other is like, well, what would Francis do? And the answer is almost always yes. So thank you, Francis, thank for you. all that you do and all, all that you show up for. Oh, thank you. Yay. Am I next? Wait, where's Vijay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, wow. Well, I, I just wanted to talk about my first time meeting Francis, and it was actually through uh, both of my day jobs at the time that they both said, you know, my, my theater 
uh, I was working for a theater part time, and uh, my boss Tony Kelly said, "Hey, you need to meet Francis, and <laughs> you need to be hip to the Asian improv community." So, and then my other day job was with Other Minds, um, the festival and new music organization, and and I was working for Marihata uh, as de- she was my development director, and I was like the little intern and. And she said, you know, my brother-in-law uh, has a label and uh, maybe you can give me one of your tapes, you know, <laughs> and I can give it to him. <laughs> so it was a cassette tape and it was a demo and it, it somehow it got into Francis' hands um, as Mari promised. And, and he emailed me and and said, hey, it'd be great to meet. You know, I run a label. And, and then we met in Oakland and that night I actually had, I had hives. I had a, <laughs> did you know? I don't think I told you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah. But I was, I don't know why I must've been like eating too much peanut butter. Or, I don't know, but I had hives and, and, and I was trying to like not focus on it, but the, you know, kind of the conversation we had was a three hour. It was a really long, amazing conversation. <laughs> it was the first conversation I had ever of that kind. Um, with a mentor and and you had asked you know you 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 said the word like strategic planning and positioning and i was like what is that <laughs> and um and it was the really the first time like someone had had really made me focus on what i wanted to contribute you know like beyond my myself and kind of looking beyond these kind of little ambitions that I have. I just wanted to be Miss Saigon at that time. Like <laughs> that was my <laughs> top ambition. And, you know, for Francis to uh, invite me then to the first salon I ever went to, which was at Colin, Colin studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, just, yeah, yeah. we played with John Carlos and Jimmy Biala and it was um, uh, summertime. And, and it was like, you know, the first time I was not pretending to be a jazz singer, you know, I, I wasn't wearing a sequin dress or anything. And I was just m- myself. And that was really, you know, it was really an incredible experience. So yeah, over the years, it's just been amazing. And, um, and I look forward to talking more. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. And I think it's your turn, Francis. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what do you remember about yourself? <laughs> what do I remember? No, I actually have a remember, I can remember things about each of you, I guess. So would that be? Uh, oh, you don't need to work that hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, I think, you know, just, you know, kind of connected to what um, Kevin had asked before about what keeps keeps me going, you know, and, uh, you know, with meeting all this wonderful people along the way, you know, it's just like, uh, how can I, uh, how can I stop, you know, in some ways. And so, um, and just, just to see you, everything that's happened and to feel like uh uh to be part of this you know you know because like i'm like i mentioned that uh you know starting out you know it's like similar to um to everyone else has spoke is you know i i wasn't supposed to be doing this in my life you know and so um you know, because actually when I met John uh, 40 years ago, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really thinking about music. And I, I actually didn't think that there that, that w- that would be a purpose for me to do that. And so I think um, every one of you and everyone of, I have met along the way and worked with has given me purpose and uh, and to be in places that I just just could not even imagine, you know. I mean, I remember um, this one time uh, uh, 
because one of the, one of the things I I like to say is like uh, you know I kind of uh, like uh, I'm like John Jang's wingman, you know, when we kind of we're going to going to different places, you know. So we went to have a meeting with Max Roach, and uh, and so John uh, introduced me to Max, and then uh, he was talking to Max about some uh, a recording of this piece that John had done called Bruce Lee, and then and then um, Max goes, "Well, who is the tenor player?" He takes no prisoners. And so I think uh, I just feel like uh, without uh, John and without everyone here that I just, I can't, I can't even imagine what kind of life I could have had. Yeah, I would have had, and I could have had, would, would have had without, uh, because, uh, I found that I was discovering more and more my, of myself in, in the process, you know? So um, there would be so much that would be undiscovered for myself along the way. And, uh, and also just to be able to tie together, you know, the things I care about, you know, because at the time I met John, you know, yeah, uh, you know, um, yeah, I was already a committed uh, revolutionary and to, you know, just to kind of see it through. And so, you know, it's been really moving to be able to, uh, you know, to get together like we have and we're together now and, and to be able to say, yeah, we're seeing it through. And so um, I just, uh, just you know, completely moved and, and honored by all of this. Thank you. Well, Francis, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I, I met Francis out of college um, at, a, at a leadership development organization called Justice Matters. And he, um, uh, and I was, I wanted to, I thought that changing the world meant that I needed to be a lawyer. Um, and, you know, he, he just, because we were in this program and he was the director, he kept talking to me. And then one day he goes, well, what do you really want to do? And I'm like, well, I, I, you know, what did you like? What did you like doing? What do you really want to do? And I said, I really love producing cultural events when I was in college. Uh, and he goes, well, you know, there's other ways to change the world. And he gave me a spot at Asian Improv. Uh, and Francis, you, you saved my soul that day. And, uh, <laughs> and you save it. I, every morning it's, it saved a little more knowing that I get to work with you. So uh, I thank you for that. And one funny, funny story, and one of my proudest moments was when Max Roach came to the office and we, you know, I, John was there too, and he's, in, you know, we're introducing everybody. And then at one point it comes to me and Max looks at me and goes, and then looks at Francis and goes, is this your son? <laughs> Which had nothing to say, and Francis saved the day as usual. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, so, this concludes uh, our program here tonight. I'm appreciative of all of our panelists Carl Evangelista, Vijay Ayer, John Jang, Erica Oba, Jen Shu, and of course, Francis Wong. Uh, we'd like to thank Kevin Falez for moder moderating this wonderful discussion tonight. Thank you, John Carlos Perea for helping us open this ceremony with that beautiful song. And a special thank you to Cool Arts for producing and presenting this program for us. Thank you, Aluya, Wolfred, Hannah, Eric, and all the staff at Cool Arts. Finally, this and all of our programs are made possible by our funders, San Francisco Grants for the Arts, San Francisco Arts Commission, California Arts Council, National Endowment for the Arts. And especially thanks to you who attend all of our events and also contribute your time and donations. There's still time to make a tax deductible donation. <laughs> you know, please visit us at Cool Arts and API Cultural Center. It's www.coolarts-sf.org and www.apicculturalcenter.org. My name is Vinay Patel of API Cultural Center and of Asian Improv of San Francisco. 
I wish you all a safe and healthy evening and new year.